yeah. the fact that I think I see at in some resolutions pathology is really not that important as much as me wanting to accomplish two things at the least with you. Yeah. Refining my scan technique right now in those yeah. examples is secondary to evaluating resolution at different frequencies, even yes. though even though I do fear I could be letting down my teacher. <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're overthinking it all. Okay, all right. You're well overthinking it all. I don't know. I, I think they are MPEGs. If you want to take the screen. Um, yeah, and I'm just trying to. I was looking at them just before you came. Oh, no worries. I came on. I just don't know where they've gone on my machine. If uh, you're okay, I can pull them up, but I would like no, to hear no. your comments. It would be easier yeah. if I've got them locally, so I'm just trying to find them. Uh, I, and I don't know quite. Where did you, where was the link you, you sent? You tell me where to put them, and I can do it even now. No, I, I just, I just wish I could remember what I was, what I was in. Oh, is oh, this, Dropbox. This funny do, you world have a, do you have a Dropbox account? I, I, I was in the Dropbox account, and that's where it was. So I, I've, I'm loading them now. Yep. So let me see. If I go, I try and do do this the clever way. So I've got you there, and if I go share screen, and then I go this one, and we go share. There's no sound. Okay. Good. Yeah. So you're sharing that, and can I see you at the same time? That would be nice. Uh, yeah. If I talk, do I show up if I talk? Uh, no, you don't. Oh, oh, yes, you do now. You do now. Okay. Okay. So I've got you. So I'm going. Uh, so I'm just going to run through them. I think we're just. See if my computer can deal with it. So this is a curvilinear image. I think what I need to do, John, is to throw the, 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 the depth in there somehow. It's not saving it to my um, no. to my output. So I'll definitely throw the lines in on depth for us so that you yep. can say, is that four centimeters or six centimeters? I'll do that the next time. It looks, it looks like six centimeters. But I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, only because what's the width of your probe? Of the not this probe, the next one. If I go to back to the next one, because I, one of the things I always do is I always know how wide my probe is, so that gives me a an immediate. Oh, you know, I don't know how to tell. Down. So normally they're about four centimeters across. So okay. that's four centimeters there, which makes that around Eight, about six. Huh? Okay. So. It's all, always a nice just uh, to always have a frame. That that number across there, that distance across there, is always good to have in your head. Because as you scale up and scale down, you know. One it's thing. Easy. One thing I will do is I think I may be anonymizing it when I'm recording it, and I need yes. to click on that to unanonymize it or whatever the yep. word is so that you have as much data as you can because these are not chats that are going to be you know presented yep. i'm really wanting to just learn yeah yeah so the problem you have on this one let's go back to them and do them in order you tell me what you 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 say what you you think you're seeing there well, this is my uh, femoral neck view, and so it's yeah. the head of the femur in the acetabulum, and I'm pulling out what looks like the ASIS or AIIS or whatever it is up above yeah. that periodically. Um, yeah. But I was attempting to track what I thought to be a darker area, um, and I was trying to get a topography on the head of, of the yeah. femur. So, yeah. And the one thing I'd say is it looks dark. It keeps bringing up my cursor over the over thing, but this area looks dark and makes you think there might be an effusion there. But actually, as you're passing through the area, that darkness is moving away in all sorts of areas, and we're not really sure what what that is, whether that's an artifact or not. Uh, all right. The other thing I'm seeing is as we come back, we slip back to the head here. 
is that as as you're transiting across the head it looks you get the sense that you're not actually going around the head at the same time so i'm not keeping the head as my objective and making an arc perfectly on the head but i'm actually yes. slicing it and translating it lateral to medial as as a topographical slice yes that's the, that's the impression i'm getting okay and so you're you're not uh, finding because if you think about the the surface of the bone yes pop back to some other point along there uh, and freeze it yeah so oh, that's a nuisance but anyway they uh the curse is here this you're wanting this to be bright you're ideally wanting part of the neck to at least be bright and most generally most importantly you're wanting also the uh a little Capsule. bit of the femoral neck to be bright okay and and that gives you your your uh, it's not such your long plane yep of, uh, of on the, the neck, neck head. and that usually also gives you a nice view of the uh, of the rim of the acetabulum and but the surfaces the soft tissues above it particularly the soft tissues boundaries with the capsule lie parallel to that and so as that becomes bright you're then most likely to see that as a clear interface which you're not here when the topography of the periosteum in perfect long on the neck of the femur is the brightest you will also yeah. see the echo of the capsule the the best as well because it's parallel to the others yes okay That's i'm just it. trying to I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to correct you john i'm trying to put it no, out no. in my own mind i i hear you <laughs> and uh that's now uh, let's have a look at the next one this is your l7 which would be your normal choice for looking at the hip i think down at six centimeters uh and again you're getting the same sense that there's a the sign of itis there and you're saying she has uh, a history of uh, uh, autoimmune issues. Now we we've not had a chance to really follow up on that too much, but she's having this in, she's having vague pain in a lot of general joints. She's under 35 and, yeah. um, you know, she's just, it's just not right. Yes. So you're suspicious. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and again, this, the same, the same yep. thing. Yep. Better views on this on this scan. And I'm uh, oblique again, on the neck. I'm oblique on the neck seeing... so that I'm not getting it clear enough and and distinct enough as a periosteal brightness. Yes, and and, and all, but also as you're scanning around, you're not you're you're going through the brightest. You're getting a bright line, but then you're immediately moving off it, and you're then slicing suboptimally on the on, on the slices either side. Yes. Yeah. And also in this case, you probably want you not visualizing the uh uh the acetabulum. Okay. And again that would be that would uh, require uh, that I heal pressure and keep the uh, angle wagged uh on the center of the, the femur, keeping the periosteum as bright as I can in you, order that's to certainly gonna be one of one of the things you, you you wouldn't just use one one necessarily one strategy, okay? Uh, because uh, but you you start I start off by looking for that that line of the shaft, so getting the sense of and I think there's a technical orthopedic term for for what it is, but that line of the shaft uh, and the anterior view. So you see see that the curved shape of the head, you know, the curved shape of the uh, the base of the head. Uh, and, and get a sense of, of hopefully a nice ball there uh, over the top of it, and then and then that relationship with the acetabulum, and and they should when you've got that that uh, uh, orientation, you should then see the acetabulum as like in an anatomy book, as a nice cup there, and then you what I do is you then tr if you're in that plane. As you translate across, you know, as as you uh, sweep yes. across, yeah, that if you've got that plane right, and if you're obeying the that that one of those rules of mine, 
in that the probe always moves almost like it's on a track. I don't know whether you can see that, but where the pencil is and the piece yes. of paper. Yeah. But, but, so, but move it like you would like. You're talking about it's, it, it's not allowing the pencil to go away from your fingertip or closer to your fingertip. It's exactly in the same plane. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. So the pro and, and that means the probe just runs as if I pushed a, this pencil through that bit of paper. So that pencil would be a guide. The probe never, never changes from that place. Yes, yes, yes. In, Which means in the sense that it is always going in that direction. You are, you are rolling the probe. I think that's the term we, we described. Yes. So you, you're saying Greg is, or you are, as you are. I am. Okay. So, so, so the probe always moves with that orientation. I can't see the picture, by the way. So yes, I'm no, no, I, I, I'm seeing you. Uh, so if I, hang on, if I go stop share for a second. There we go. I, th I should get me up, yeah. Yep. So it's as if, for me, the probe is almost always skewered on an immovable skewer. So it only, the probe only ever moves in that direction. So I'm holding is the, the skewer the object that you are looking at, or is the skewer it, 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 the, the the plane in which that that probe is moving? Yeah, if if the probe probe could be, you know, like when they when they make movies and they have rails for the camera, this is like a rail for the camera. Okay, and and but the camera doesn't change its orientation like this at all. Yes, I never, I I try almost as couple of exceptions in the body but i i never move the probe obliquely to the to this to this pencil if i want to change the direction of the probe i change the direction of the pencil but then the movement of the probe is again completely in that orientation is is, is there and then if i want to change the angle of the i want to make it go steeper you know roll the probe I change that, but then this translation movement of the probe is again just in that plane. I don't know why that's so hard for me to get, John. Okay, um, well, let me, um, if you're cutting a sausage. Yes. A straight sausage. Yes. And you want, you could absolutely, you, you've got a straight sausage and you want to slice it absolutely short axis. Yes. Completely round, yeah? Yes. You would keep the, you would always move it in this way, like a machine, you know, like, like the slices in the shop, that's what you're trying to get. Yes. Now, there are times when you have a curved sausage. And so that slice, if, if you want to keep that perfect slice, that may change. But the tiny incremental change from one slice to the next is almost always on that. What it doesn't do is if the pro, if that sausage is curved, what you don't do is is you don't keep slicing straight. Yes. Or you don't shift it to the side, keeping the slicer straight. What you do is you turn the slicer. Yes. Okay. And so, but so you always, but the probe is always orientated with this. It's, it's like your policeman. Your policeman searching a field. Yeah. And you want them and they search in a line, all straight, a completely straight line. You don't let them be some, some forward, some backwards. They all go together. Now, you want to go around a corner. You know, you want to turn, turn around a bit. What you don't do is you don't get them to shuffle across. They still all go straight. They may go faster on one side to, make, to keep that plane straight, but they are all in the direction they are looking which is out, sort of out of the probe, they all move together. Have I How can have I, got I explaining that? No, I, I'm, I'm following you, but I want you to, I, I want to demonstrate to you that I am following you in yep. a way that I am able to be graded so that yep. you can say, yes, you're getting better. You're getting, you're, you're understanding what I'm saying. And, yep. and I guess, I, in part of what I would, I'm trying to transition this in is almost a, you give me the, 
maybe the easy progression to where yeah. I can deliver to you a, you know, 10 second or a, a 30 second following of the long head of the biceps, you know, up and over something. And my responsibility is to make sure that I slice that curving sausage as round as I can. So I'm, so, so that you can say, hey, you allowed those those policemen to walk sideways here as opposed to keeping our best eyed policemen on the center of that. Do you follow yes. what I'm saying? Yeah. It, and, so and I the, think, go, go ahead. The two examples are the biceps as it goes up and round. A more straightforward, apparently more straightforward one, but, but actually captures the, the sense of it, is trying to follow the, uh, the median nerve as it enters the carpal tunnel because it comes up. So you have to change the angle of the probe to match it as, as, as it comes up the wrist. And then it does a little shimmy around the, uh, uh, around the tendons as it comes, uh, as, as it goes around. It's kind of angled so around. So from the pronator teres or, or from the pronator quadratus, fo yeah. following it up to the transcarpal ligament. And then as yeah. it comes in, it, keeping it as um, non-changing in its oval shape as I can or keeping the, fi yeah. the, the fibers as resolved and yeah. optimized. Yes, yeah. staying, staying in, in as true short axis. It's its true short axis, not just running along the, the direction that you think it's going I understand. in, but recognizing but, but, that as it comes up, you need to tilt the probe back. So as it, your pencil is in the, is, is, is the is the actual nerve yes. your pencil your pencil is the nerve as you are translating the the the, the searching police officers but yes. but it's staying in the center yes it always stays in the center your it's goes back to the way i visualize it is i'm taking that nerve whatever route it takes it lies straight on my plate on my dissection plate Yes. I'm always cutting it as if it was absolutely straight. So all its movements are absorbed by my probe, and my probe never leaves that true short axis on the structure you're looking at. So, the, so that's why it, it never waves on the screen, or it should never wave on the screen. Yeah. Refining that pencil to be never move it, moving is yeah. also your way of saying you don't want that pencil to be across two of your slice lines, yes. your, your slice thickness or slice width lines, it keeps that item that you're using as a pencil always yes. oriented perfectly. Exactly. In both both planes. In, in in both the lateral plane and the axial plane. So we get the axial, the the lateral and the other one uh, the elevation yes. or whatever yeah, yeah. Um, so, th so that means that you not only have to move it side to side you not only have to do this but you also have to do this to compensate so if it comes so if, so if the structure moves up on your screen even a little bit it yes. means it has changed angle so this is what i this is what i'm hungry to 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 get from you I recognize that when that probe is in your hand and you're not really caring where the little line is, um, but it makes sense if it's oriented the same way you are on the screen and the way you hold the probe. I, I, I want to know that as I am doing it in real time, you are able to relay to me Greg, you're shifting it this way. I would ask you to do this to try to optimize that that particular item because yeah, we should try that. The value that it has, yeah, and and I think yeah. that that's that is what I want to do um, it, it, with real scanning um, the the next time, or we could even do it now. I'm just I so enjoyed looking at images that you had, um, yeah. and I wanted to. Let me ask you a couple questions about those images I sent you. I don't yeah. need to see them again. Uh, no, but right. in, in, in the event that 
it would help to see them again, one of the key things that you had said to me is that sometimes, Greg, on deeper structures or on structures in general, it it is not the highest frequency. It is the optimal frequency for what yep. you're seeing. But remember the disconnect that probably shocked you that I'm not even looking at at the microanatomy that your eyes are are actually looking yeah. at. So when I did those three scans, when I acquired those three scans, I was simply backing up and looking at how grainy they were as opposed to looking down at the head of the femur and optimizing as good as I can with what I can. So yeah. what I don't know is if any of those give you the ability to say, do you see this particular fascial plane right here? It is more evident on the 7 than it is on the 15 or or that kind of thing to prove your your theory or if those are if if those are just not apples to apples because one is scanned with the policeman marching obliquely. Do you, do you understand? Yeah. If you look at the first one, let me just share that again. If you look at the star, is, is that up now? So if you go back here, we play. You can see that bone down there, putting the cursor in from the top. Here, this this bony surface is nice and clear, even even if you're not optimally placed. Yes. Oh, it keeps coming in. That's a nuisance. But it keeps coming in, in, and you see it regularly. Okay. When we go and scan, uh, if I go back, when we scan on your 15, for example. Now let's go even even on the seven. This is really struggling. It's compounding. It's really struggling. You can see the marks. On, you see the V shape on your. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I I I believe what you're saying is there is some software at play here that's messing with the image and it's trying to do something to the echoes. And and yeah. I've always wondered what those crazy V's even are. These crazy lines are what's called compounding. So what you've got is a very clever trick that the scanner can do, which creates a pulse here that goes down there. And it does that using five, probably up on, at this depth, around five different uh, uh, cells. Five, five, five separate crystals in this, okay. in this part of the screen, in this part of the probe, are firing simultaneously. Or slightly, actually at slightly different times, to create an, an interference pattern with which will create a smaller and narrower pulse going this direction. A little bit to the side, some time afterwards, a, another set of, of cells will fire at a slightly different timing, and that makes the interference pattern cause a pulse to go at an angle. And what that and, and what they and there's another one goes off in this direction. So what basically the machine does is it acquires this picture once. Then it acquires a picture at an angle, sort of like what we'd call a rhomboid, with the box pulled over, and then it does exactly the same thing. And that line is telling you the angle it's doing it at, not deliberately. Wow. But, yes. And then the three pictures are stitched together in the hope that looking in three different directions at the same points, because each of those points is therefore, each of those points within that box here, the slightly narrowed box, are visualized by three different pictures that are then stitched together. And what the machine hopes to do is to reduce the anisotropy and also to reduce the, uh, uh, improve the signal to noise because the noise should be random. It isn't, but it should be. And so what it's hoping happens is that, you know, you get plus and minus and, they, uh, and so you get a better signal to noise. So it's a double system. Improves Called the anisotropy. compounding. And that's called compound imaging. Is it because does it become more obvious the higher the frequency or the lower the frequency or is it just? No, it's it's just a good piece of kit. The it was a 
back in the 2000s, uh, compounding started to be, uh, Philips particularly, uh, got some a very good, it's a, it's a hardware and software issue. It's, it's, it's not all okay. post-processing, but it's, it's a processing. They got it right. And their machines were an order of magnitude better than everyone else's, or they seemed like it at the time. Okay. Uh, they were very good, and Sonosite got it as well. Everyone else developed it very quickly afterwards, All called right. it different things, perhaps. But uh, but that's always been uh, that's always been all the modern machines use quite a lot of compounding and uh, to varying degrees, uh, and that's what your machine is trying to do. And what you're seeing there is is issues with the, the software putting it together. Uh, and so you're getting this, <laughs> this degradation of the picture and, and uh, giving you that little mark coming down there. So in theory, the, your best part of your picture is in this area. But you can, let's say you're getting a nice picture there from, from the seven again, but while you were scanning through it, yes. that picture fell away more yes. quickly suboptimal angles yes than on the previous one and i might be over egging the differences but when we look at this one here it all looks a bit blurry at that depth <coughs> i think it looks like you got a little bit closer to the uh femur here yes it's not it's not blatantly obvious that they're different just about make out the line there of the compounding Okay. Just there and there. If you look closely. I do see it now. Yeah. But you don't normally get that on a on a on a more a higher end in uh, on a higher end scanner. But it, on a higher end scanner you don't get the obvious um drapes yeah. that are that, that are pulling from one side to the other. Not normally, no. And actually so, on some machines it's quite difficult to switch those off. The <clears throat> compounding off and so a trick some of us used is we'll actually deliberately put the color box on because to save time the machine with when it's most machines when they are looking with the color box on they don't bother doing any compounding and so it's like a, a little uh, sort of uh, hack for getting rid of the compounding on it yes Cause it, cause it, it takes time it, it trebles to do compounding it, it at least trebles the uh the time it takes to acquire each image. That makes perfect sense, John. Yeah. So as, as, as you were looking at those images, your preference, um, you, you had said that you look at things predominantly in short axis when, when you're scanning ligaments and, and nerves and tendons. Long, long structures to be, when you're assessing them, <clears throat> if you can see them in short axis, that is always, you're, you're, you're much more likely to reliably and quickly pick up the pathology in short axis, I, I find. So if I'm looking at long header biceps, to try to look at long header biceps and be sure you're seeing the pathology in long section, <clears throat> it takes quite a lot of work. If you can get a good short axis and you can go up it and it looks fine, it's probably normal. Tick. And you're on to the next one. As, the it whole relates, as it relates to the hip, we're in short axis on the, uh, we're in long axis on the joint. Um, yes. and, and that's just because we're looking at fluid content of the capsule and we're looking at a labral uh, short axis and, and, and relevance of the topography of the sphere shape of the femoral head. And we can see, um, um, neck or, or talk to me about that well you get if that's that idea of being in short axis is is really a, a tendons thing okay and, and it's not black and white it's you you've got to think about you know your your skewered bit of paper when you're acquiring information about a structure you're always you want to be moving with the probe like this across it you're acquiring like an mri sequence so you're acquiring a, an mr sequence uh, almost of of the area so if you want to get the information out you are taking a, a line like that in a narrow long structure 
like a like a long head of biceps tendon you get a very you you would have to work very very hard to scan that in in long along the tendon and get optimal pictures all the way around you'd have to be fanning yes. all the way through yes. here yeah and you'd be seeing looking at a lot of the same tissue twice you just trying to scan across it like that you're yes. suboptimal as soon as you get past the uh, the apex of the of the heart of a hemi of the top hemisphere he hemi circle so it's it's so much easier you go into short axis you can get the anisotropy get your your fiber directions uh, in the plane of the uh, out of in the slice thickness and you can scan through and you can acquire that information you can get the sound back from that very easily when you look at a joint you want to be across you normally to, to really understand what's happening at the joint to see it you've got to be across it so long axis across the joint and then you're again you've got your skewer through the probe and you scan it's a curved skewer obviously but you're always scanning skew with the probes on that getting that plane there across the joint so you see the joint right on that bone short act with the joint line absolutely staying in the middle of that screen so you're imagining this idea that the structure you're following in short axis is the joint line yes so you imagine instead of it being a tendon it's a joint line and that's the and it's the same principle you get the information about the structure in one sweep and instead that. of the objective axis being at a structure that is in your image the objective axis on a joint is at the center of the joint and you're translating and and moving the probe as it relates to the center of axis of the joint or, or the center of the joint so that Stand you're through. optimizing the, the 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 joint itself your 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 yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. You, to optimize on a joint, you are focusing on the surface of the joint or the content of the joint as as your focused image. Yeah. But you're modifying. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, okay. If, if, if you imagine you, you had a, a bit of plasticine. plasticine. I don't know what that word is. Um, uh, putty clay. Okay, Children's okay. Clay. Okay, okay, and you rolled it into a little snake and you draped it over your model of a hip, just over the joint line, like that. That would be your curved tendon. I would drape it to fill the joint line. Well, no, I'm, I'm ju you're just imagining, if, if you imagine that, uh, as we talked about scanning tendons, staying perfectly in yes, place. Yes, yes, yes. Imagine that. That and, and the tendon being your target. Yes. As you scan round, the joint line is your target. I understand that. Yeah. You it, it it would change when I would be looking at the uh, iliopsoas tendon as it goes across the front of the joint. I now am going to to evaluate that and 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 the rectus femoris reflected head. Now yes. now we're going off of a script. Yeah for a joint and we're going yeah. on to the yeah. actual planes of the fibers associated with those anatomy. Exactly. They are different. You've dissected out the hip. Yes. Thrown away all the soft tissue. You just dissected out the hip. You've studied the hip. You then get the, you're never looking for a picture that tells you more than one thing. You only ever, your orientation is always related and always optimized for a specific structure. I, I, I get that. And yeah. now I'm going to just go off everything for just a second. What in the world does pipped to the post mean? That's where you're riding, you're, you're, you're racing on a horse and you, and you're, you look like you're going to win and you, and you slow down a bit and the other guy comes crashing up behind you and he just passes you just as you get to the finish line. The post is passing the finish line. You're, the, 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 the verb is that you have been pipped, buddy. He pipped yeah. you. Yeah, he pipped so, you at the post. So, oh, right before you got there. Yeah. Um, because to me, I had thought pipped may have been tying a knot on a post. 
no. But no, the post is the finish line, and the you've finish been finish line pimped. the horse race. <laughs> I heard that, and I go, you know who I'm going to ask that of? The, the the same person that said horses for courses. And yeah. <laughs> horse racing is um, a big thing in England. <laughs> That's fine. I just when it's used to clarify what just happened, and I get totally out of, I, I don't yeah. have a a hook to hang it on. I'm yeah. I'm just confused, and and uh, so l l like this too. I believe that what I'm going to do, um, uh, John, I would like to make a goal of providing you. Uh, my effort at scanning the long head of the ball. How about you tell me what a drill is that you ask of your students um, as it relates to the long head of the biceps? Because I, I want to be respectful of your brain time. And if I provide you an example in the Letty share file of me scanning short axis, the, bi the long head of the biceps, um, I would love to ultimately have that broken down as to, yes, you get it because you've kept it, whatever, yeah. Yeah. For, 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 for at least you to review. And then the next time we meet, uh, whenever that works best into your schedule, I do want to see whether it's possible for me to do some live scanning so that we can use your words to help me with it. So maybe we'll platform an example of me doing that on the um, on the long head of the biceps in a video fashion to you, I would like to have another try at maybe an L7 look at my wife's hip, trying to keep the concept of whatever you called what we call Play-Doh. We call it Play-Doh here. Play in the, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but but I will try to roll that around the the joint and I will try to keep the probe optimized yeah. on the periosteum a little bit better. Yeah. You're, the hip is difficult, but there's no, that, that doesn't stop you, stop you doing that. Do I you wondered go whether from you could, anterior what's the to technology? Leave. What's the technology you were going to use for you, for watching you scan? Are you, uh, what were you thinking of doing for setting that up? I was either going to try to have you use something called Clarius Live. Um, it yeah. does require that we both have fairly decent speeds. Um, yeah. Or um, we can try again at me streaming it in as a third participant. Uh, yeah. I don't know whether that worked very well because it seemed like it was a fairly big skip in, in, in your ability to, to see that. I, th um, I think it was... It it, it, it was tricky, but uh, should, c can we try now? Um, you let me go get my machine. Yeah. Yeah, we can try both those. Yeah, because I thought there's nothing quite like having a quick go at something at the finish of a session to then make it easier with the start of the next one. So the, uh, are you there, John? Yep. Um, I'm going to see how best to do this. Um, let me grab the, it does not, it, it's an iOS system, so I have to get my tablet to do it, hold on one second. You have access to your Gmail account right there, don't you, John? Yep. All right, so I'm gonna send a, first we're gonna try their proprietary um, software. Yeah. And let me see if I can pull this up here. And let me see if you're in here. John. Um, and I'll use the uh, Gmail account that you have. Yeah. I accept. 
And I'm going to hit call. The screen recording in Clarius, uh, sure. Yeah. Accept Clarius live request. Presume. Good. The advantage of, of this method would be not that we couldn't do it anyway, is that at a push I could always use a, a second uh, device. Yeah, I Maybe. could. Uh, I could up. also do it to your phone. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do this. Allow. Yeah, we'll allow. So I've got uh, I've got two pictures, one of your hands and one of your uh, and one of the image. I'm presuming. Yeah. So is it possible that you have the ability I'm to? I'm gonna mute your. Uh, you might. There's sound coming out of both programs. So, is it possible to mute the sound from one or the other? I've muted one of mine. That's good. Now you're able to see my probe here. I can see your face. I can see your probe, and I can see something that resembles an ultrasound screen. Okay. So. Um, so whether I'm it's having to, it's on the other side of my iPad. Yeah. So I'm just wondering if I can. Oh, now it's on this side of my iPad. Yeah. But you want to see? I like the other picture. I can see your hand. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's good. I'm trying to see if I can. I've got I've, I've got it twice. I've got a box on the on the ultrasound picture, and a box beside it. Which is... uh, and I've got oh. control of a cursor as well with a little delay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Is what controls the kind of cursor? Is it your finger or is it the mouse? It's the mouse on my computer. It's... Um. There's a bit of a lag, but then it is going halfway around the world twice, so, <laughs> or at least once, <laughs> twice. <laughs> I'm going to try and take my my computer off of that, so I can then go on this platform. Yeah. And now I'm able to. And I've now got an ultrasound picture. Yeah. Uh, now I am going to screen share briefly, just so you can see what I'm getting. Yeah. Yep. Which is going to be a whole world of me looking at you, looking at me, looking at you. <laughs> close to what I'm seeing on mine. And I've lost the cursor there. That little box there is annoying me, but only because I've got it, the screen here, and it's it would be too small. And there may be possible for me to play around with the description. Oh, look at that. You mean, oh, all of a sudden, John, I'm getting it. You yeah. actually have a picture on the top right that is replicated in front of your screen yeah i don't know how to get rid of that we need to get rid of that that's that's redundant and not needed uh, well i'm saying it probably is but uh, though yeah we we let's 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 go with it for a moment just just while we're just playing with the the basic thing now what i want to know is whether the probe is orientated right for you and for me is it orientated right for you, correctly for you I don't even understand your question. Okay, John. can you see my cursor on here? I see your cursor on my picture. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's 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 on your wrist. Can you see me? Yes. On on thumb side. So for my orientation, that with that picture, I would want this to be the thumb side, which I think it is. Yeah. 
So I'm seeing the probe here going down and I'm seeing yes. I'm seeing this as that side of the probe going across there. What you have just needed to have done, John, I have no okay. knowledge you, of. And if so you, I cannot... well, and just if you look, at, instead of looking at the probe, look at, or your screen, look at my, my shared screen. Yeah. Okay. So if I was look, if, if I was the person scanning, I would want this end of the probe here to be represented on this side of the screen. Yes. So that if I moved, if I asked you to move the probe to the left, I would be asking you to go that way. And I would want the picture to come in on this side. So as I am going this way. Whereas the picture is actually coming in on this side. Okay. So if you turn the probe round, yeah. And now I'm going, yeah, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah, but does it make sense to you from where you are sitting? Do you see that light there, John? Right yep, here yes. On, on my probe? Yeah. I believe that is the corresponding. Yeah, to this side. To that. Yeah, so, yes. so that now is is comfortable i could i could scan that wrist in theory if i could control that probe now because that's the right way around so i'm yeah. looking at look at this that's my wife hello <laughs> <laughs> okay so so we are now i'm oriented correctly yeah so and uh, and in an ideal world your wrist would be flat but it might not go there But yes, so, so 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 that's yeah that that that's that that's working for me. So now you're going to scan. You're going to look for the uh, median nerve. So and there it looks like it's just there. Yeah. So you're going to put that in the middle of your screen, and if you and if we're lucky and it's right, and then you're going to angle it. Yeah, and when you get the dots in exactly the right angle, you can start to see the uh, the tendons as bright up yeah, there, and there and, and the tiny little dots appearing in the tendon in the in the nerve here. Yeah. So now, do you see how it goes dark all of a sudden? So yeah. you need to pitch the other way. So pitch forward. Yeah, and you go through and back to the middle. And the way I. I drill my students is it's like a bell curve Do you remember the old bell curve from school yes yeah you don't if you're climbing up the hill if the picture's getting better you never stop moving the changing the angle you only stop changing the angle when it gets worse again and then you bring it back oh, to the top of the hill you're, if you're on a, if you're on a trend that is the right trend why stop it? Exactly. You keep going. You have to go over the top of the hill to find the optimum angle. You've got to get. You've got to go down the other side, and then you come back to your optimum angle. Yeah. Yes. I lost it again. Yeah, so that's, that's I, all right. I'm having to look so. Um, in order for me to see what I'm doing, I'm literally looking at the screen you're sharing. Yeah, no, don't. You, 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 you trust me. Just look at your screen. Op optimize. That's require yeah. That I, that I go yeah. like this. Well, don't worry. That's all right. I, w I don't need to see your wrist. Now we've got the orientation. I don't have to look at your wrist at all. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, so you can, you can stand on your head for all, <laughs> for all it should matter. I will tell you, I have, I, I, from, from the end of the carpal tunnel, proximal, yeah. I, I don't have much time at all with a probe on a, a median nerve, John. Yeah. So when you said, here's the median nerve down here, yeah. I, I did not even know it. I mean, your probe is on something and you're saying, here's the median nerve. Okay. Right, so so let's go back to the picture we had before, if you can. They're, everything's slowing down a bit. 
So uh, should we try, should we come out of Zoom and see whether that improves things? I don't know if I know how to talk to you if I'm not in Zoom. I know you, 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 you're talking to me through Clarius at the moment. Oh, well, let's, let's try to turn Zoom off then and uh, see whether we can do it through Clarius. Yeah.